Welcome back to Dragon Army Books. My name is Dustin, and this video is a part of a series where I'm reading and rereading all of the books in the Ender Universe, because the final book in the saga is coming at the end of this year, The Last Shadow, where it's tying up Ender's Game and the Ender Shadow series, the Ender and Bean series, in one tidy little bow. And so I'm wanting to read the books that I haven't read and most of the books that I have to just kind of put a, you know, a period, an end to this long journey that I've been on with Ender's Game. I said in my previous review video, which you can watch in the annotation on the first Formic War, that Ender's Game was really my entry into not only the genre of sci-fi fantasy, but really of just enjoying reading in general. Came across it in middle school and it changed my reading trajectory for the rest of my life. Uh, but I have thoroughly enjoyed the Ender's Game universe and the characters. And so I'm reading the prequel stories first. I'm going chronologically with the first Formic Wars. And now in this video, I'm reviewing the two out of the three books that have been released so far in the second Formic War. The first book is called The Swarm, and it really is just part four to what should have been the Formic Wars, because it is the same characters that we're following, uh, primarily the three, uh, a young Chinese, I think he was like a rice farmer named Binguin that is being trained uh, by the Chinese army or military at this point. And then we've got Lim Jukes, who is now CEO of Jukes Limited and son of the first hegemon of Earth. Earth. And we've also got Mazer Rackham, of course, who is an elite soldier whose heroic actions from the first war were completely erased so that no one would know about it. We've also got Victor Delgado. So I guess it's four main characters that we're following. He is a space-born miner who is always wrapped up in all of the events somehow. And then we've got two new POVs who are arguably the most interesting characters in the story. Uh, we've got Khalid, who is a Somalian space pirate who is terrorizing ships like a very villainous kind of insane character that's very interesting to have in the mix. And then we've got Wheela, who is a Thai like biochemist who her Buddhist beliefs cause her to pray, I don't know about two, but for what she believes to be the hive queen. And she somehow gets wrapped up in the story as well. The story picks up a, a couple of years after the conclusion of the first Formic War. We thought we had five years before the second invasion arrived, but we're finding out that it's actually much closer than previously expected. To be honest, I actually enjoyed The Swarm. In fact, it's the first book in the series that I've actually enjoyed. It's not great. It's not exceptional literature. If you aren't already an Ender's Verse fan and if you haven't read the first Formic War, you're going to be completely lost here in The Swarm. But it's good. And it might be because I'm enjoying the characters more. But I actually think that Orson Scott Card and Aaron Johnston, his co-writer here, learned what didn't work in the first trilogy. And they're really trying to make it work here in the second. One of my complaints for the first series was that since there were a plurality of characters, we're jumping back and forth and they're just brilliant. Everyone's brilliant at the right time, do, does the right things, and that hasn't changed. But rather than jumping from character to character, although we do go from character to character, we spend a lot more time, it feels, with the characters that we are seeing through their eyes and getting their story. And so... It, there's a, a lot more emotional appeal than just we've got to take out the buggers. We've got to take out the buggers. They're not buggers yet. The Formix. Um, there, there's a, a lot deeper of a, there's more human stories being told. And so I thought that that was pretty good. The primary problem here with the swarm is that it was a lot like the first book in the first Formic war. And it's a massive setup, which is unfortunate. There's, there's no like, like, key moment that happens here in relation to the human formic war uh, that is saved for future books. The second entry in the second formic war is the hive and there is more action here. In fact, we get a few major action sequences between humans and formics, but also between humans and humans. Like there are, there's a lot of political maneuvering and tribalism. Those are like major themes here as we're seeing kind of 
not state side, I guess it's earth side as well as Luna, the moon and, and how that's working out because some of our main characters are there and all of the maneuvering that's happening there and all of the subversion that has to happen through Mazer and Victor and other characters that we know and love. Imala Bootstamp is another major character now here in the hive. Um, and, and we have to watch how they have to operate, uh, really against what the earth is trying to do it's crazy because like earth powers and it's probably realistic are trying to get what's theirs and if there is success against the formics then they want to be the ones that are being successful not realizing or not stopping for a moment to think well if this doesn't work we're all dead you know like but again that's no slight on orson scott card and aaron johnson because that's exactly what would happen i know because i live here but Unfortunately, it's not as good of a book as The Swarm. It's maybe a step back. We're still getting some of the characters, but it kind of suffers middle book syndrome where we're moving the pieces in place. Thankfully, like I said, there are a few action scenes that happen and a few shout outs to the future Ender Game universe. One of the key ones here is that um, young Binguin and uh, this squad of kids are at Grav Camp. And they're really working uh, together to subvert the uh, you know, rules placed on them by a lot of the adults. They're called one thing by the adults, but they consider themselves to be rat army. I've said it before, but my favorite moments in the Formic War books is when there are slight or, or overt shout outs to Ender's Game. And I think for the most part, they're all done in realistic and reasonable ways. And it just makes the inner child in me uh, giddy. While there's not a lot of things that necessarily happen here, it is setting things up and I do like the way that it concludes. In fact, it almost made me emotional uh, because the Ansible is starting to become more and more widely used, at least by, not by a lot of people, but by our people, by our key people. And so that's always interesting because that instantaneous communication across space is going to be key as we know for future wars. And I'm certain that it's going to play a major pivotal role here in the second Formic War. So the third book is not yet released. It's pending publication. There is no cover art for it. It is called though The Queens, which is super exciting. It's going to be interesting to see. Because I think that some of the things that are happening in the first and second Formic War in these books is going to be contradicted in Ender's Game. It's bound to be. Now, I know that OSC and Aaron Johnston are trying to stay within the lines that Orson wrote 20, 30 years ago at this point. And I know that's got to be difficult. And so if there are a few small things, I'm going to give you that grace. But if there are some major things, then that's going to be problematic. But for now, I'm just trying my best to enjoy the story. And it's a little bit up and down, but I'm getting through them as quickly as possible. Honestly, I think I have a few short stories here before I get into Ender's Game. So it's right around the corner, which of course, it, although it might not be the best book that Orson Scott Card has written, a lot of my friends like Speaker for the Dead even more. It's Ender's Game is my favorite because it's, it's Ender's Game. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and like this video. If you haven't yet, click subscribe, join the Dragon Army, and we'll see you in the next one.